Welcome, everyone, to the L7C Podcast NFL Edition. We are back. We have the producer with us, Justin Ackendale. How are you doing today, sir? I'm good, man. It's a good Saturday. I was just watching my um, current favorite college football team, the Indiana Hoosier, putting them a whooping on the Michigan State right now. How bad are they up? It was 24 nothing last time I checked in the third quarter. Wow. And that is the uh, team that ooh, Michigan State beat Michigan. And then now they're, ooh, ooh, boy. That's rough. That's rough. But we're here to talk some NFL with you guys today. We're going to be talking about the Thursday night game that just happened. Some big games. The Cardinals versus the Bills. The Seahawks versus the Rams. The Ravens versus the Patriots. Justin's always going to drop some betting knowledge. Uh, we're going to go over midseason MVPs and rookies of the year. And let's with the Thursday night game. AFC South showdown between the Colts and the Titans. And surprising to me, the Colts came out on top. Justin, you bet did you bet money on this game or how did you how did you see this game? I did bet on this game. I took the Titans. They were on they were a home underdog, Titans plus one. And I love home underdogs. And I thought the Titans had the edge at quarterback specifically. So that's where I was going. And um, I was wrong. The special teams in the third quarter absolutely shit the bed. The Titans didn't score after halftime. It was just an ugly second half for the Titans. And they lost me some money. So now with the Colts winning, surprising, they're at six and three as well, as well as the Tennessee Titans. So. They're both atop of the AFC South. Is right now, do the Colts have the tiebreaker now? The Colts will have the tiebreaker. That was the first time they played, and they have the same record. So, yes, they currently have the tiebreaker. And for a team that's 6-3, and three, I feel like the Colts have been underneath the radar a bit. I know we've talked a lot about their defense because they got a top defense, but I didn't see them being a 6-3 and three team just flying underneath the radar like that. Well, yeah, I mean, last year they were – I think they were eight and eight last year with Jacoby Brissett, and um, they still have they still have most of those same components. They still have a great offensive line. The defense is really good, and Philip Rivers was supposed to pull them over the top. Even though I don't think he's very good, he's very turnover prone in my opinion. <clears throat> but but yeah, he's he got him at six and three right now. So last um, on Thursday he was. 20, 29 for thirty nine for three hundred eight yards. So he was carving up the Titans. So. I guess he might be the answer for him. Philip Rivers, he's only on a two-year deal, right? Or is it a one-year? I think it's a one-year deal, if I believe. I don't know what um, deal he's on, but he's at least he, they at least have him for the rest of this year, that's for sure. Yeah. So with him being on a one-year deal, I know you've given some spicy trade options on our podcast in the past. How about the Colts go get Sam Darnold this offseason? I think that would be a great pickup for them. I know Sam Darnold could definitely do some things in that offense because watching the game on Thursday, watching Phillip Rivers, he was so comfortable. Like, Titans weren't really getting any pressure on him. They, had, they only sacked him one time, so they weren't getting any pressure on him. So a more athletic, younger quarterback with a better throwing motion can, def- mm-hmm. can definitely do can definitely do some things for times. I actually like that. I don't know what they would give up for him, but yeah, Sam Darnold on that team. Sam Darnold could definitely lead that team and make them. He might be able to take them over edge. If you ask me, honestly, I would just guess how much did uh, the Cardinals give up when they traded Rosen? Did they only get like a third round pick in return? Or I think Josh Rosen was. Um, I think they dealt him for. Um, yeah, second round pick. So maybe that might be all it takes for Sam because if the Jets, as of right now, would have the number one pick and they're going to get Trevor, might as well just get another pick to compliment Trevor Lawrence and then you ship off Sam so you don't have any QB controversy. And Sam on the Colts, next 10 years, there you go. Yeah, I mean, Sam, Sam Darnold just needs a good situation. And if he's with the, like the Colts have a good, they have a decent ownership. They have a good coach. Like I said, Frank Wright was the man leading leading the offense for the Eagles when they won the Super Bowl. So we see Carson Wentz now without Frank Wright. 
So yeah. you get him, yeah. you get him with Sam Darnold. Shit, sky's the limit. Yeah, because with the team they have now, and you know, since we had our technical difficulties, this being take two, I really thought about the Colts team. I was like, oh, if they can get a young quarterback on the market for the next ten years, they might be set again. And Sam Darnold is the top. I think the top young quarterback that could be on the move going this offseason. So get him on the Colts, and that that could be a perennial NF- AFC uh, team. Yeah, I mean, Sam, the Jets are going to get the first pick, and they're going to get Trevor Lawrence. So Sam Darnold's definitely going to be on the open market next year. So I feel I feel like people are going to probably throw a lot at him. Throw a lot at the Jets for that. Then it's a good situation. The Jets are going to have Trevor Lawrence. They're probably they're going to get a pretty good pick for Sam Darnold. Then you're off to the races with your rebuild, a good rebuild. So some, some, some they can sink their teeth in like, damn, we got something. Might have to get rid of Adam Gates, but I think the Jets are in a good spot right now, even though they suck. They're in, who, there's hope for them. Who wins the division, the Titans or the Colts? That is tough. I think I might be leaning. I think I might be leaning Indianapolis at this point. They do the Titans and Colts do play again in two weeks, so we gotta see how that game goes. But the Colts have a slightly easier schedule than the Titans coming up. The Colts have Green Bay next week, Tennessee in two weeks, Houston at Houston at Las Vegas, Houston again, Pittsburgh at home, and then Jacksonville. And then the Titans have. They're at Baltimore next week, then the Colts, then Cleveland, then Jacksonville, Detroit, Green Bay, and Houston. So I think the Colts have an easier schedule. But if the, Titans, if the Titans win against the Colts in two weeks, then the Titans are back in play for that division, obviously. That's going to be a tight race in the AFC South. We're definitely going to have to keep our eyes on that. The next, now let's talk about some big games going into this weekend. The Cardinals versus the Bills. You did have to educate me that not only are the Cardinals well into a potential playoff spot, but they are well into potentially winning their division, which no one expected at the beginning of the year. So now they're playing a very good Bills team. And Justin, just talk about how the Cardinals are exceeding expectations, especially Kyler Murray in year two of him being in the NFL. And obviously Cliff, Kingsbury, who a lot of people didn't even think he deserved the job, but now it's looking like those two are really have that team clicking and obviously getting DeAndre Hopkins help. Yeah, I got to give major props to the Arizona Cardinals and Cliff Kingsbury. I mean, they're doing an awesome job right now. Kyle Murray's absolutely killing it. He's a dark horse for the MVP. He might Mm -hmm. be the MVP if he somehow squeaks out winning this division. Kyle Murray right now, 70% completion percentage. 2,050 passing yards, 16 touchdowns, seven picks. But here, the rushing yards, rushing yards are crazy. So at this point in the season, comparing Lamar Jackson's MVP season last year and Kyler Murray right now, Kyler Murray's rushing stats are better than Lamar Jackson's stats. Actually, not even rushing, just overall stats are on pace to beat, on pace to beat Lamar's MVP season last year. He has... Oh, whoa. whoa. Say, say that again. Please. Tyler Murray's pace right now is better than Lamar Jackson's MVP season wow. last year. Wow. That, that is absurd, and no one has him right now in the top three for MVP. Yeah, man. It, he, is, he is absolutely on fire right now. Football outsiders have the Cardinals with the ninth rated offense. And their defense is surprisingly a top 10 football outsiders defense of 10. So they're playing, they're playing good defense too. I didn't know about Buda, ba- Buda Baker until a couple of weeks ago and when we played the Cowboys play at night, but he was all over the field that game. They have a great defense. Patrick Pierce is still out there locking, locking dudes up. The Cardinals are a scary team right now, and you got to watch out for them in the NFC. Wow, and they're they're going against a tough Bills team. Like, who who do you have in this game? I do have the Cardinals win this game. Buffalo is coming off their two biggest wins of the season two weeks ago against the Patriots. They won that game late in that game after Cam Newton fumbled, driving to um, driving for the game winner, and then they absolutely beat down the Seahawks last week. Josh Allen throwing all over the field had over four hundred yards passing four touchdowns and a rushing touchdown. So he was 
he's on fire. So yeah, the Bills po- the Bills pose a threat offensively. I'm a little worried about them defensively, how they're gonna how they're gonna handle Kyler Murray in that offense. They do have DeAndre Hopkins and Christian Kirk has been lighting up recently. So we're going to see. But I, I like the Cardinals winning this game. Like I said, their com- Bills are coming all the way out to their place to play. And speaking of the Cardinals division, we got the Seahawks and the Rams going at it. You talked about how Buffalo just shellacked uh, Seattle, who at the time before the game, Russell Wilson was the MVP frontrunner. A lot of people think not so much after that. And you got a Rams team that I think is pretty good, but then they're not. I don't think of them as a top NFC team. So when you're looking at this game, one, who needs this game more? Who's going to win this game? And how much does this affect the division? Who needs the game more? I definitely think the Seahawks need the game more. They were the front runner in that division going, what was it, like 7 and 0? So, so they were the front runner in that division. They already have a loss against the Cardinals, and they played the Cardinals on Thursday night football next week. So that's going to be a great Thursday night game. They play the Rams Sunday, then the Cardinals. Yes. Sunday. Oh okay. yeah, and the and the Cardinals already have a win on them, so Seahawks might be looking ahead, maybe. But the Rams, their only wins this season are against the NFC East and then the Chicago Bears. So <laughs> I'm a little, I'm a little um, skeptical of picking them right now. They do have a good defense, but like I said, they played those NFC East teams within the anemic Chicago Bears offense. So I don't know how good their defense is. But I think they're going to be able to put some points on on the Seahawks like everyone has been able to because Jared Goff is a pretty good quarterback when he doesn't have pressure. He doesn't have pressure in his mm-hmm. face. He can scan the field. They get that running game going and get the play option at, uh, off of it. And they look like a good team. But I think since the Seahawks need this more, they got whooped up on last week. I think the Seahawks are going to win the game, but it's, it's going to be tight. It's going to be a good divisional matchup. Oh, man. You, that is any of these game primetime games that the rest of the public can see or are these the regional games? I think that Seahawks Rams game is, um, I think most of the countries want to get that game. Because I know in Cincinnati, we got the, um, the Bengals and the Steelers at 425. So I think, I think okay. most of the countries want to be um, watching that um, Seahawks Rams game. Okay. Okay. Next game we had on our agenda is the Raven and Patriots game. And I think a lot of people will be confused on why we're talking about this game because the Patriots aren't the Patriots of old because right now they're not good. They're three and five. Their offense is terrible. Most of their defense didn't even decide to play this year because of COVID. And their quarterback, Cam Newton, who at the beginning of the year, we were like, oh, he might still have it. And then he got COVID, came back. And his stats have not been good since coming back. Justin, you want to talk more about Cam Newton's stats as a Patriots and what they're really looking like right now? Yeah, the Patriots don't look good right now. These these stats for Cam Newton are going to look kind of startling. He's 68% completion percent, not bad. They're, they don't have really a deep third, so they're a deacon dunk, so that's going to be high. 1,417 passing yards, two passing touchdowns. We're in week 10, so you only have two passing touchdowns in week 10. That's a little odd. Seven interceptions. But but he does have 314 rushing rounds and eight rushing touchdowns. He is a, the best goal line quarterback of all time. But, yeah, it's just not looking good. The Patriots, I mean, I think Bill Belichick is trying to – this is Kyle, this is Colin Cowherd's take. I think they're trying to secretly tank by – letting all those players opt out, not really addressing their needs on the outside on offense. And it really is putting Cam in an awful position to, for his new job. So what would you get for secretly tanking? Because right now they're three and five. I still think they're going to win some games this year. So what are they trying to get in the draft? Maybe, maybe, a high, maybe a high enough pick in the top ten maybe so they can, might be able to package that into moving up and getting a first pick. That's, that's what I'm thinking because this team, this team needs a quarterback. Like they are in quarterback purgatory right now. And then the rest of the team, they need, they need wide receivers. They need 
a quarterback and wide receivers. And I think the Patriots are going to turn it around because you did mention that all those defensive players opted out. So the defense is probably going to be better next year. But their offense is an absolute problem right now. Tom Brady's probably sitting in Tampa just laughing at him. Is he really, though? After last oh, after Sunday? last oh, We'll talk about that later when we get to the bets. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the reason I think this is an important game, not for the Patriots side, but it's for the Ravens side. I mean, the past couple of weeks, their offense has not looked as explosive as we are accustomed to seeing in the Lamar Jackson era. Uh, their offense, rushing-wise, is still number one in the league, if I remember, but their passing is second to last. And they need this game to get on track. This is the Sunday night game as of recording. I don't think they're going to flex it out for anything right now. But what do the Ravens need to do in this game to get themselves on track? Because I'm looking at the AFC. I'm looking at, obviously, the Chiefs are at the top. The Steelers, when they got Big Ben back, they still haven't lost the game. And that defense looks like no joke. You got teams like the Bills. You got teams like the Colts. There's some teams in the AFC that if the Ravens aren't careful, they might get left behind. Yeah, the Ravens. So, th- so for the rest of the year, the Ravens are going to be fine. But it's just that playoffs. They need to get their offense. They need to get their passing game going, working. So in the playoffs, they can keep up with the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Buffalo Bills, the Kansas City Chiefs. But a couple of weeks ago, when they did play the Pittsburgh Steelers, they were out playing in that game. They do have one of the best defenses in the league, number one in points allowed, all that good stuff. They turn the ball over and score. So they just, they just need to find a way to get Lamar Jackson to get, get some outside passes, keep running the ball, keep, keep playing good defense, and hopefully that, can get you far, hopefully that can get you far enough to where you need to be. And hopefully that defense can slow down some of these more high-powered offenses. But they're, they're going to be fine. I mean, after this game, the schedule really lightens up. They only play, like, really two – only really three contenders left. I mean, they play Tennessee next week, Pittsburgh Pittsburgh on um, Thanksgiving, Dallas in between, then at Cleveland. Then they finish off the season with Jacksonville, the Giants, and the Bengals. So I think if they can get past this three-week stretch at about 2-1-1 and one, and then get to the back end of their season – They'll be fine. They'll be fi- they'll get into the playoffs and they'll be cool there. And then they just gotta figure out how they're gonna be able to run the ball and run the ball and get their play action type of game on those better on those better teams and keep up scoring with them. So you said with them in the playoffs said you're a fan of Lamar Jackson. I'm a fan of Lamar Jackson. Obviously, Chelsea, who just recently did a podcast and did the women in sports ones, she's a fan of Lamar Jackson because she was tutoring the uh, the Louisville football team while he was there during his Heisman run. So she's obviously a fan of his. If they go to the playoffs and he doesn't win a game and he's 0-3, what does that do to the panic meter for her? And this guy, before he gets labeled, can't win in the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you got to remember, he, he owns these regular seasons. I mean, he since he's been playing, he's been killing in the regular season. But yeah, these um, if he doesn't win another game in the playoffs, if he goes one and done, or yeah, if he gets one, if he goes one and done in the playoffs, then yeah, we're going we're going to talk about it. But Lamar Jackson has has proven that he progressively gets better over all seasons. COVID probably messed his off season up, but he takes the criticism yeah. and he tries to work on his game and he tries to fix the problems that are in his game. So I think he's going to be fine. Maybe the maybe the um, Ravens can get him some more um, outside weapons. That might that might help him out a little bit. But I also, they also are missing their um, their Pro Bowl just got paid left tackle Ryan Stanley. So that might be hurting the offense just a little bit too. But like I said, they still have a great defense, and that defense can take them some places, and they have an easy schedule. So. Hopefully they can get this win against the Patriots and get them get them on track a little bit better. And they they did play great in the second half against the Colts last week too. So we gotta remember we can't we can't overreact too much about the Ravens. That's true, but you know what will happen if they lose to the Patriots on Sunday. He absolutely he absolutely can't lose and- to the Patriots on Sunday. I don't think it's gonna happen, but he can't he cannot <laughs> lose that game. Absolutely not, though. No. 
because we will have some overreacting from the media. But let's get to happier things. Justin, what are the bets this week? How can we make the – let's make some money for our uh, valued listeners. What are some top bets you got? Man, I got – thank God we didn't have a podcast last week because I will lost y'all some money because – I did not do well. <laughs> it was it was bad. It was it was not a good week last week. But first bet I'm going to give y'all this week is I like the New York Giants to cover their spread over the Philadelphia Eagles. They're getting three and a half points. If you bet it now, I think they're getting four. And I really like I really like the Giants here. I know the Eagles are getting a couple of their. Um, Linemen who were injured back. I know Miles Sanders is coming back, but when the Giants played them um, Thursday night, a few weeks back, they played them real tough. It took Carson Wentz throwing that dime in the back of the end zone of Boston Scott, the five six running back. It took every it took everything the Eagles yep. had to beat the Giants, and I kind of see it looking like that again. And three and a half points is a great number to get the Giants out over the Eagles in this game. Okay, okay. All right, you heard what what's some other money? We need some and then money out there. Back over to the New Orleans Saints, our captain's favorite team. Hey. I like the 49ers getting 10 points over New Orleans Saints. I know the what? whole world got to see the Saints Sunday night, but that is not the real New Orleans Saints. Tampa Bay came out flat. I'm Really don't know why they were so flat, but that game was over within the first five minutes of the game. And when was the last time you saw the Saints do that? It's been years since that happened. That is not the real Saints. I think I think the um, 49ers are going to come out a lot tougher. Kyle Shanahan got, has a hard nose, um, a hard nose running game. I know Jimmy Garoppolo is out, but shit, he's he's really not. You're really not getting much of a drop off from. Um, Jimmy Garoppolo, Nick Mullins, anyway, and I think the, I think the Saints are going to naturally let down from getting that huge win against um, Tampa Bay last week. So I like the Forty Nine here, and ten points is a lot of points. So I want to I want to stick with the Saints real quick because I guess their two best defensive games this year have been against the Buccaneers, though the first game of the season. Um, and then this past game where they picked off Tom Brady five times. So maybe they they feel maybe they feel disrespected that people like you just wrote them off and they won't win the NFC South or uh, when they play against the Bucks, they play. Big yeah, I think the Saints just might have the um, Tampa Bay Bucks number. If I'm Tampa Bay, I, see. We can't sleep on Tampa Bay either because, like, I still remember them absolutely destroying Green Bay. We got, we, we got, like, you can't, like, no team is as bad as their last game. So, we just got to keep everything respected. And that's where I'm coming from with the Saints. That win on Sunday is not what I've been seeing all year or even the past couple years from the Saints. So, I just think they're going to naturally let down. But they put themselves in a great position to win the NFC South. Being, being the Tampa Bay Buccaneers twice, I can't overstate that enough. That was two huge wins for them. Two huge wins for them. Like, they, they 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 should be feeling good about themselves. It really was it really was an ass whooping of great proportions. If you ask me, they did good on Sunday. I I heard you. Uh, were, were, any more money tips? You got? Yes, I put the um, money card in for Arizona. Like I already said earlier in the podcast, I really like them. Mm-hmm. And then I like the Cincinnati Bengals getting seven. The who day, day Cincinnati Bengals? You heard me right. I got them plus seven and a half over the Pittsburgh Steelers. Wow, the Steelers undefeated Bengals. That offensive line is bad. Is a compliment. The weapon. What, what's, what's making you see it? Are you in the Joe Burrow? I am Kool-Aid? in the Joe Burrow Kool Aid. He just he just okay. does what he has to do with. You know, they they have a great receiving core. The Bengals actually do have a good receiving board. Yeah. They got Tyler Boyd. They got T. Higgins. A.J. Green really hasn't been doing anything. But Tyler Boyd and T. Higgins are two great receivers. And they chuck that ball. Joe Mixon's been hurt. So they really just have been one dimensional and having the pass. But they, they have been carving people up. And Joe Burrow has looked good doing it. 
The Steelers tend to play down to their competition, just like they did last week against the Cowboys. It's a tough divisional matchup, and seven and a half points is a lot for that. And I think the Bengals can definitely cover that spread. I don't see them winning the game, but it's going to be closer than a lot of people are thinking, than the public might think it would be if they haven't been following the Cincinnati Bengals all season. You know, a lot of uh, analysts talk about how well the Steelers draft wide receivers, but now just thinking about it, especially the early 2000s to now, when the Bengals are good, the Bengals typically always have a good wide receiver core, like the Chad Johnsons and the TJ, who's like, they always have a good wide receiver. Yeah, the ba- see, the Bengals are not the Browns in Ohio. Like, the Browns are just complete other trash. Here's what the Bengals do. The Bengals love to give you just a little bit of hope. Just that little bit of hope. They got a nice team going. All those teams with Andy <laughs> Dalton. And then they'll fuck it up in the playoffs or just spectacularly lose it. They give me kind of um, a Cowboys type of feel. But they can, they can um, they, um, back in their heyday, back in um, early 2000s, mid 2010s with um, Carson Palmer, then later on Andy Dalton, like they were a tough out and they were a decent team. And, the common denominator there was they always had great receivers, even the Andy Dalton. The Andy Dalton teams had A.J. Green and Marlon Jones Jr. back in the day. So, yeah, when Cincinnati is typically good, they have a good receiving core to go along with it. Okay. Any more? That's it. it. If I do well this week with these games, I might put my money on Baltimore. But we got to see how these four go. We got to see how these go. These four go first. Okay, okay. With that being said, let's go into it's the midseason. Midseason MVP and rookie of the year. We're gonna start with the midseason rookie of the year and the way that you were just speaking so glowingly about him. I think you are going the Joe Burrow route for the rookie. Yes, I am. It's just the stuff that he has to overcome. No line, no running back, defense so so. And he gets the job done. I mean, they're two five and one. I mean, not a great record, but hey, they're they're getting they're getting better every week. And they the AFC needs to watch out for Joe Burrow in the future. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. And I, I agree with you. It's just I'm going, I am going Justin Herbert. It's just maybe because I've seen him more on the primetime games. I saw him against the Buccaneers going toe-to-toe with Tom Brady. I saw him in the Monday night game going toe-to-toe against Drew Brees, which he should have won. Absolutely. Game, field goal kicker didn't miss. And then, oof, our uh, Byron, I would have watched it in person. I would have had to drive Byron to the hospital because <laughs> he would have had a heart attack at the same time <laughs> to the Chargers on that but. I, I just see this guy competing, and a lot of analysts, they got it wrong on this Herbert guy, man. He can play. I don't like the way he got the starting job, though, with the doctor who did, who should be banned from all medicine, messing up agree, Tyron agree. Taylor. But Herbert, and there, there are some other rookies, too, uh, that we didn't talk Like, obviously, uh, Jefferson from the Vikings, but he's a wide receiver, so he won't win the award. Clyde edwards Lair. There's, there's some good rookies. Yeah, there. I just want to go, like, the AFC, the quarterbacks in the AFC, they they have a bright future. Joe Burrow and Justin Herbert, they are going to be stars. You still have Patrick Mahomes is only twenty five. They still have Lamar Jackson. AFC is going to be real. Deshaun Watson. AFC is going to be real competitive the next four to five years with these quarterbacks. But yes, I do like Justin Herbert a lot too. It, I think I got to give Joe Burrow the slight edge because he was starting at the beginning of the season and. But the story of Justin Herbert starting tragic for um, Tyrod Taylor, but hey, he, he won that game mm-hmm. with no experience and was lighting up. He he's a gamer. I, I do like Justin Herbert too. He he can ball too, and that's and then the Chargers are just. I feel like the Chargers going to bring him down a little bit, but if there's anyone that can try to bring the Chargers up, stop them from losing all these close games that always come down the wire. It might be Justin Herbert. And, I mean, you brought about the two quarterbacks, but we'd be terrible not to mention Miami's coming. Tua is coming. That first game, the defense carried them. But after watching that second, they're, they're Yes, coming. they are. I mean, I don't think he's going to. Actually, Tua is definitely live for um, rookie year. 
they might be a playoff team. I don't know how the yeah, I don't know how these voters mm-hmm. might look at that because he's the only one that could be a, a playoff quarterback. So we just gotta wait and see. I think it's crazy too because with the magical season that Burrow had that got him for basically he was just gonna be an accountant at like Huntington <laughs> to being the number one pick off of one season. But it's crazy that if Dua didn't get hurt, I mean, number one pick would have been out. Yeah, of I'm, yeah, it's wild, but the way he played, he would have been the two pick. Who who drafted two? Where he would have been if he wasn't um Cincinnati? Now two was Washington. So, so they took Chase Young. he would have been for he would have been the Washington football team. I'm sure doing the same thing, chucking to Terry McLaurin. So yeah, yeah I mean, because it because that Miami team, like I know you have high praise for their head coaches. They could play. They got some people, they and they got a lot of picks. I yeah, they have Houston's pick. Draft. They're they yeah they're looking to get a top ten oh, pick. Boy. So they probably want to add maybe another weapon, maybe another defensive player, probably some edge rusher that I don't know about in college football yet. So yeah, they're the Dolphins are coming. They are definitely coming. Mike Flores is the exact opposite of Matt Patricia up in Detroit. He was somehow able to bring the New England the New England way down to Miami, and it's just working wonder for them. I really like that team. They're looking good. I don't even know. How yeah, he's probably still has a job. going to get canned soon. Like, and and just so you guys know, Matt Patricia got that job after Jim Caldwell, a good black man coach. They they went to the playoffs that year. That year he got fired. He got mm-hmm. fired after a playoff season. So, yeah, Matt, Matt Patricia is mm-hmm. on the list. On the list for Adam Gates. Like, yeah, they need to go. I think it's also because the NFL is all about the trends. Like, that's when everyone was hiring, like, the Patriot assistants. And then everyone now saw Scott McVay's success. So then everyone went to the good-looking, young, offensive coordinator type thing for the coach. And then Bill won the Super Bowl. Everyone's back to doing defense. NFL is just a bunch. It's almost like high school trends. They are doing but whoever the cool kid, whatever the cool kids are doing. That is what the bomb of the NFL is trying to be like. It is funny. <laughs> like, which is. So with midseason MVP, a lot of people had Russell Wilson at number one until last Sunday with the shellacking that they took from Buffalo. So, Justin, what I want you to do on this one is go count down from three, two, one. So give your third, second, and then who you think is MVP. Right Let's now. see. Number three, I think I'm going to go Aaron Rodgers. We did talk about Kyler Murray. Okay. If Kyler Murray gets to win this week, mm-hmm. I think I'm going to have him over Aaron Rodgers. But yeah, I really like, I really like Kyle. I really like Aaron Rodgers. He's been doing great. Second, second, I will have to say Russell Wilson. He's been he's been on a historic pace, mm-hmm. historic pace before the last hiccups of the past couple of weeks. And then number one, I have to take the reigning Super Bowl MVP right now, Patrick Mahomes, the man. Yes, the man's That's eight and one, sixty-seven percent completion percentage, point two thousand six hundred eighty-seven passing yards, twenty-eight touchdowns, one pick. For comparison, with Russell Wilson, Russell Wilson has twenty-eight touchdowns and eight picks. So he's playing mistake-free football. The team is on fire. He does have a better defense and supporting cast, I would say. But Patrick Mahomes is the league MVP at the moment right now. Okay. Okay. Uh, since you mentioned him, I will go opposite. I will go number three, Kyler Murray, just because with Aaron Rodgers, it's sad because it's almost the LeBron top tie fatigue where you just expect yeah. these things to happen. But Kyler, me personally, I didn't expect them sniffing the playoffs, let alone sniffing a division title in his year two. And I didn't think Cliff Kingsbury deserved the job because he wasn't even good in college, but here we are. So I would put him in number three. Number two is the same. Russell Wilson, the historic pace, let Russ cook. He just traded. Get your money, money, young man. Let's basically. get it. <laughs> so he's getting that money. I'm pretty sure he's fine with that contract and, uh, you know, it helps that also Sierra's his wife. So money is going well for them. And number one, I agree. It is Patrick Mahomes. I've been watch obviously been watching all the games this year and with the Chiefs I almost have not paid attention to them because I just expect them to win every game. 
just because they have Patrick Mahomes. And then when you really look at his stats this year, and you're just like, whoa, only one pick? Really? And, uh, and right now, I just feel like he is the MVP. Me personally, I do want Russell Wilson to win. I think he needs that trophy, at least get some votes. Now, if the Cardinals somehow win the division and win the NFC oh, wow. and get the number one seed. Kyle Murray's the MVP. What's his give what's his give little award if he does that? Like Yes, if they if I'm almost pre- I'm almost to the point if the Cardinals get a top two seed, at least two, he has to be at least second place or first yeah, I mean, MVP. Yeah, and it's a regular season award. And, so you saw what Lamar Jackson did last year. He wants to play mm-hmm. and was one and done. So if he does, yep. if, he, if they somehow sniff out a number one seed in the NFC, you have to. Kyler Murray's the MVP, and I don't think it'll be close. I already, told, I already said earlier in the podcast, his pace is better than Lamar Jackson's 2019 season. So yep. it's pretty easy to me at that point, don't yep. you think? I mean. Oh, no, as soon as you said that, that's when it really clicked that this guy, he could win MVP if he's already ahead of, what Lamar did in MVP last year, and I still don't know if it was unanimous. I know he won by a well margin. So if he will, like, that, that's wild. And this is year two for Kyler, too. You gave him one weapon in DeAndre Hopkins, got him a new weapon, and look what he's doing. Like, top two seed in the NFC, Kyler Murray wins MVP. Right now it's Patrick Mahomes hoping Russell Wilson wins. That's just, that is just me. Justin, man, we reached the end. We are up. Wait, because we didn't get to talk about it. I just want to ask you, because you're the football aficionado, how come nothing ever happens at NFL Man, trade deadline? I don't know. I I want to say it's because I want to say it's because of COVID, but I mean nothing happened. No one did anything really. Of no, I really thought Green Bay was going to get a receiver. Yeah, it's just just a yes. little mind blowing to me. But um, Green Bay does have um. Alan Lazard coming back. That was their number two receiver before. He had a rib injury, I believe. So I think that's going to help him. So Devont, so um, Devontae Adams has a little bit of help. So I think that's why they didn't really make a move. But yeah, nothing, nothing really happened other than like Carlos Dunlap going to um, Seattle, which hasn't really helped too much yet. And Unique Ngakwe getting traded to the Ravens. It was really quiet. Just nothing happened. I was expecting some big things. We were even ready to do an emergency episode, if need be, if a contender got a piece they needed to put them over the top. Yeah, we'll, we'll say the trade deadline stuff happened. for the NBA. I, I might make a special appearance on that contract because I love trade deadline the NBA. <laughs> that shit is fun. <laughs> oh, oh. Man, don't let me get started. Oh, man. I'm trying to have oh, to man. He's the runners are pulling. Oh, Evan might have to let me hop on one of those NBA God. podcasts just so I can be a fly in the room and hear you guys go. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I got to get back on with him, man, because everyone else is like, oh, okay, everyone's too weak. That man just disappears and then shoots up. I'm like, shit, the season starts next month. Like, bro, I tell you, it is neither here nor there. Justin, do you got anything else you want to say to the listeners? Yeah, keep, keep supporting us. Oh, there. talking about the NBA has got me excited. I cannot wait for our NBA content that's going to be up in the winter. We're going to get Evan on there. I might have to jump on there if he, if he ain't going to be consistent. So, yeah, just look out for all our content that we keep doing. And we're going to keep grinding for you, keep um, producing content for y'all. And I mean, I think as people have listed with me how I have my segments about how much I hate Lana. If you don't hate Lana, wait to talk about Oh, man. That is, that's going to be a good one. It's going to be fun. I hate them as much. But as Justin said, yeah, thank you guys for listening to our uh, podcast. I know last week we had some big events, so we had to only have one podcast out. But we're back. We're going to be having the episodes come out. I already know. Justin already has one in his inbox, and then he's obviously going to have this one at the time at the end of recording. And, you know, we did take a break from the NFL, but we're back. I already have some ideas for our next episode since you brought up Devontae Adams in a conversation that me and you have had. I think our next podcast episode, we need to put some time for the top five yeah, wide receivers. Yeah, absolutely, because right the league just has some great wide receivers right now, and there's some guys who I think don't get a lot of credit. and. 
I want to give them credit on this podcast. Shit, the mainstream media ain't going to do it. Justin Hackney will absolutely put you on my podcast and get to talking. So, yeah. So that's definitely a subject that we're definitely going to hit two weeks from now because I really have to sit down and look at it because there's some people, as Justin said, who don't get credit and I think are in the top five, maybe in the top three because, and we already mentioned it, Devontae Adams, he doesn't get talked about enough. Don't want to spoil where I have him on my list, but he's going to yeah, be on my list. That's definitely going to be a fun one. I need to start researching that right now. Mm-hmm. But that is all we have. Thank you, everyone, for listening to the L7C podcast. Thank you, Justin, for being on, talking that good NFL. Remember, rewind, listen to Justin's bets, get those bets out so you can make some money, and then we'll be back giving you that good stuff two weeks from now. Thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C Podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms, and we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care.